As we've been hearing, allegations that the family of murdered teenager Stephen Lawrence were spied on by undercover Metropolitan Police officers have been met with shock and condemnation. Those allegations were never presented to the 1998 McPherson inquiry looking at the police's handling of the murder investigation, a revelation described as a terrible travesty by a leading member of the inquiry team. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Guy Smith, reports. 20 years after Stephen Lawrence's murder and again controversy has erupted, this time over serious claims that an undercover officer was told to find evidence to smear his family. If somebody in the family was involved in demonstrations, drug dealers, anything. Peter Francis was that officer, working at the time for the special demonstration squad, now disbanded. He says Stephen's friend, Dwayne Brooks, who survived the racist attack in Eltham, was also targeted. But it's allegations that this was hidden from a public inquiry that has angered some. People who had that information should have come to us, and if people, police officers, were stopped by the senior officers from coming to see us and tell you the same information that we th they thought we ought to know, whether it was important information or not. That's a really terrible travesty of the police. But it doesn't end there. The undercover officer claims he was also instructed in 1993 to find information to discredit political campaigners like Lois Austin, now working for a trade union. I was a peaceful protest. I had a political message, a message which was about campaigning against racism, campaigning against the division and the, the activity of the British National Party. And I was rewarded by our police service by being spied upon. Not surprised. Uh, because they were part of a general pattern that the Met employed of targeting black activists of any sort uh, who disagreed with them. And that was extended to victims as well as their families, as we've seen in the case of Stephen Lawrence. Today, the Met Commissioner tried to reassure Stephen's father that these allegations will now be investigated properly. I hope to be able to reassure him, uh, Mrs Lawrence and also Dwayne Brooks and others, including government, that what we've done already and what we'll do in the future will be objective. So now two investigations will look into whether claims to smear Stephen's family are true. If so, the Met Commissioner this afternoon summed it up. It would be a disgrace. Guy Smith, BBC London News. And in the last few minutes, the BBC has spoken to Stephen Lawrence's father, Neville, in Jamaica. We need a public inquiry led by a judge to try and sort out this mess. We don't want to go another 10 years from now and something else happen. I don't know, even know if I'm going to be alive for another 10 years. I need to get this sorted out, done and dusted, so I can get on with my life. Well, with me here is Clive Efford, the MP for Eltham in South London, and joining us from our lead studio, former Metropolitan Police Officer Mike Panett. Uh, a very good evening to you both. Um, Clive, if I can turn to you first. Uh, we heard Stephen Lawrence's father there, Neville, saying, you know, he wants answers to be able to get on with his life. And he said earlier today, nothing short of a judge-led public inquiry will suffice, and he has no confidence uh, over the measures announced today. What do you I, make I agree that? with him, actually. I was calling for more. But I think we need an independent inquiry. Judge-led um, would be excellent, with powers to uh, require people to attend, uh, with consequences for people if they give false evidence or fail to give evidence, um, because I think that uh, what we've seen is that uh, people have been prepared to pay, play fast and loose with the um, uh, information that they want to give to an inquiry. And this was one of the biggest inquiries into policing in this country, it had major implications for race relations. And there were uh, allegedly some people in the Metropolitan Police deciding, well, should we give this information, should we not give that information, undermines the credibility of a whole And, and you mean there are allegations that information wasn't given to yes, the McPherson yes, inquiry at yes, the time? Yes. Uh, let me just turn to uh, Mike Panett. Um, undercover operations like these where you know specific targ specific groups or people are are targeted how high up do sort of undercover operations have to be approved how high up in the met well of course look things have absolutely changed since the tragedy of of what happened with poor old stephen lawrence and his long suffering family looking for justice you know things have moved again you know 20 years down the line we are now and thankfully since there's various uh, procedures now in place which will absolutely you know show the thought process 
the decision making skills and this goes right to the very top, right up to the Home Office to make decisions on where we're going to deploy undercover officers because it is a vital job that a lot of very brave men and women absolutely undertake. But there's no, you know, notwithstanding that this is what happened um, with the allegations that are coming out, they need to be thoroughly investigated. I, I question the timing um, and why the fact that McPherson wasn't made available, but, you know, reassure the people of London that the, the majority of police officers, 99%, if these allegations are true, will be absolutely like me, um, devastated and be looking for some answers. And again, we stress that these aren't allegations of a smear campaign against the Lawrence family. Uh, but how confident are you that undercover operations uh, that go on now can't go off target? Look, there's, there is absolutely... Having undercover officers do a vital role. The, the first objective of the government, as we say, is to protect its citizens. And sometimes infiltration, whether you're dealing with terrorism or extremism, it, it, it is a vital source. But what really is robust now and... and this is the key to it is the decision making the who makes the absolute the authority to go ahead with an operation this should be all recorded it should go right through to the most senior police officers and, on, and in fact politicians so it's all documented and available to the people that okay. need to be held account Th thank you mike i just want to bring clive back in uh, we have heard from the met commissioner sir bernard hogan Howe this evening and he, he has said that he's shocked by the allegations and finding out the truth about what happened 20 years ago is is not a straightforward task um in terms of the McPherson inquiry, you know, 20 years of, of trying to sort of rebuild trust and relationships with communities in the area. What will this have done to that? Well, I think this is an issue for the police and they should want to draw a line under this. Uh, and therefore, what, what we've got to have is full transparency, which is why I agree with Neville uh, in the sense that we need an independent inquiry. We can't have the police investigating the police. The public have never had confidence in that. And that's what's happening at the moment with part of this uh, this investigation that the Home Secretary has set up, that we've had allegations last year, we're still waiting for the report that, that corruption affected the investigation into the murder of Stephen Lawrence. That, that is due to be reported next, next month. Now we're adding this to it, so that's going to be delayed. We have an inquiry taking place by Derbyshire Poli Police uh, Ch Chief Constable in Derbyshire under the IPCC. This is a mess. We need to get all these issues out into the open, a public inquiry, judge-led, as Neville was said, and, and so that people can have confidence in what is being said. I called for this inquiry to be set up, in the McPherson inquiry, on the understanding that people would give the information to them. Now we're finding out there's a possibility that some people decided there was information that they okay. shouldn't give to them. We need to have public ex disclosure. Okay. Clive Efford here, thank you. And to Mike Panett in Leeds, thank you very much indeed. There's a warning that...